Hello guys and welcome to the first episode of the Budding Watch Enthusiast here in 2019. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I had to change plans, uh, change gears in this episode quite a bit because I wanted to get a new episode out a week ago. Uh, and then I got sick around the time that I would normally be recording a new episode. So I had to push it back a week. Uh, and then I intended to do um, a kind of a New Year's resolution for watches episode uh, this week, which you guys are now going to get next week because uh, kind of suddenly uh, I got not one, not two, not three, not four, but five new watches in uh, to the channel for review. Uh, uh, one of them was one that I purchased. Uh, which is my wristwatch check, which we will get into later, uh, because uh, because uh, we'll talk, we'll just show you that one later on. But yeah, four new watches um, coming in, and it's funny because so they they all came from uh, my good friend John Keel over at Watch Gauge, uh, and I thought he was sending two watches for me to to check out and 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 review uh, on the channel here. And then, like I said, once I got him in, uh, there was there was four in addition to the one that I purchased as well. So that took me off guard a little bit. Um, I've already filmed those unboxings as I'm filming this intro, and I was gonna do the unboxings and then uh, and then a, like the New Year's resolution thing, and then the unboxings, even when edited, took like 20 minutes. So, so we're gonna go ahead and split that up into two separate episodes. So this week, you have we have the mega unboxing, uh, where we're unboxing and checking out, giving like initial impressions on five uh, five new watches, and then uh, and then next week we'll we'll talk about my my 2019 watch resolutions. Uh, let's say for the year, and also going to talk about in that video uh, my purchasing plans for 2019 watches that I plan uh, to pick up throughout the year. Uh, one of which is already checked off the list uh, that you guys will see later. So so that's the intro for this video. Um, without further ado, let us switch down to the desk. Uh, and we can check out these five watches that I just got in. And a, before we get started, a big, big thank you to my good friend John Keel over at Watch Gauge, uh, who sold uh, the watch that is mine that we're going to check out today, uh, but is also was also generous enough to lend in the other four watches to the channel. So, John, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be keeping these for a little bit and giving you guys a solid review on these. So let us start uh, with the ones that were lent in. Um, the first ones we're going to look at today are from Ocean Crawler. Uh, Ocean Crawler is one of the newer brands uh, that John is a retailer for now over at Watch Gauge. So if we crack this guy open, uh, there's not one but two watches in here. Uh, they are both the Ocean Crawler Core Diver. Uh, nice little watch case that these come in as well. But yes, not one but two Ocean Crawler Core Divers. Now, I will mention as we're looking at the ocean crawlers here, um, these are both prototypes. These are both uh, production models of this watch. So it's going to look a little bit used. It's going to look a little bit beat up. Obviously, if you're buying them from watch keys, they're going to be brand new. They're going to be shiny and spotless and all that stuff. But yeah, check out the core diver here in blue. A uh, very cool, and, and obviously today we're just going to be doing some first impressions of these watches. Very nice blue. Uh, sunburst effect on this dial, and I'll tell you one of the things that I really uh, that really stands out to me on this one is the circular date window down at the six o'clock position. I actually really dig that uh, quite a bit as uh, as we're checking this one out. Nice big thick dive watch here uh, from Ocean Crawler. It is a two thousand foot uh, dive watch, so big and bulky case. A couple things here too that I'm noticing. So we have this bezel. Uh, that if you see has a, it's kind of a hybrid like machined edge, but also like a little bit of scalloping on the edge as well. Um, definitely doesn't have the big wide scallops like you might see uh, on an Omega Seamaster, uh, but very, very cool. And also of note with the bezel is that I do believe that that is a sapphire uh, bezel insert there. Uh, sapphire glass in the bezel insert as opposed to uh, a type of metal. So yeah, something that you don't normally see every day uh, on every di on all these dive watches. Of course, uh, helium escape valve over here on the side as a dive watch of this depth would definitely need. Um, if we take a look at the crown, uh, we do get the Ocean Crawler logo that you can see there as well. It's signed, very nice. And the other thing I'm looking at too with this watch, um, very stout lugs. I don't know, it kind of reminds me a lot of the case on, on my Stratton Synchro where the lugs don't really come out all that much, uh, kind of very stout. 
Um, I don't know if this is sold on a bracelet. I'll have to I'll have to check that out and see if uh, if if it's sold on a bracelet. Um, take a look at the bezel here. The action on this one. A uh, little bit of play on this one. I, I'll I'll chalk that up to the uh, production model quality of the watch. So we'll go ahead and unscrew the crown here. Um, pop it out to see that the watch does indeed hack. And also, if we push it in to the inner position, you can see that we do have a quick set date on this watch as well. Now, I will also say, um, John did make sure to mention me that the crowns on these were a little bit stiff. Um, again, that is because this is a production model, or not a production model, but a prototype rather. Uh, but the crowns on the regular models are, in his words, uh, like butter. Um, nice, chunky rubber strap here as well. Uh, definitely a big fan of this nice rubber strap. So let's put this blue one down. So here's one that's definitely probably much more in my liking. You have this uh, this black and orange model here. Uh, the other thing I like too is we, on the outer part of the dial here, we do have uh, that nice silver contrast ring. The blue one has it as well, but I do really dig how they do have uh, the cutouts in the ring to allow the markers to sit in there as well. I think that's definitely a very nice touch. Let's take a closer look at this one. And see, I, I actually prefer this one, even though I'm a big fan of sunburst dials. Um, I do like this one because you have the flatter finish on the dial. It definitely lets the, the markers uh, play with the light some because they are uh, done in steel as well. Very, very nice. Very, very fun dive watch. Um, I've gotten to check out Ocean Crawler at a couple different shows that I've been to. Uh, Christian, who is the, the owner of the company, very nice guy, uh, very cool to talk to. These dive watches are definitely in the vibe of kind of a step up from like a Helsin watch or things of that nature. If you like really chunky divers, um, really like tooly dive watches, then this is definitely a brand to check out. Um, like I said, this is probably the one that I'm going to be spending the most time with. I have a feeling because it's black and orange uh, that my wife is also going to be stealing this one a little bit from me as well. I can also tell you too, one of the things I really like about this one, so normally when you see sapphire inserts in the bezels, they're, they're kind of bubbled up, they're kind of rounded. Um, the thing I'm kind of digging here with the Ocean Crawler here is uh, it is more of a flat bezel. So it's kind of the same style of bezel that you would see with like a ceramic bezel. Uh, but because it's sapphire, um, it just has a little bit of a different feel and a little bit of a different finish, uh, which I think works really well for the watch. Should also mention the movement inside of here is a Salida SW200. So it does have a Swiss movement inside of the watch as well. So here's how the Ocean Crawler Core Diver looks on my 8-inch wrist. Uh, again, bigger watches, no problem for me. Uh, that is the big benefit of being of the larger wristed <laughs> variety for sure, uh, is that you can pull off these big watches uh, without looking like they're gonna they're dwarfing your wrist or they're overly large. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be spending a little bit of time with this one. Um, I think this is out of the two brands that John sent in uh, for me to check out. This is probably the second of the two that I'm gonna review. So if, if, if a very heavy-duty dive watch is your style and you want to see uh, what I have to say about these, then keep an eye out uh, in the future for the review. All right, so the next watches we're going to look at is from John's newest brand that he's carrying, and that is Balticus. Um, I've never, I'd never heard of Balticus before John brought them on. I don't think I've ever even seen one uh, in person at a watch show or anything like that. So this is going to be a brand new experience for me as well. Uh, the initial impressions are quite are quite uh, quite nice, considering the production, or maybe you could say overproduction, uh, with this initial look with this box that they come in. So I'm not sure which Balticus model is in here, guys, but I will tell you that whichever one it is, uh, it cost at most $700. So I, I will say right off the bat, this is pretty impressive presentation for a watch in this price range. But let's go ahead and pop this box open. Aha! All right, so this is the... Balticus Bronze Wave. So forgive me, I'm going to keep the plastic uh, on the dial for now as we do this one. Um, so here we have, as you can see, a bronze diver uh, on this rubber strap, this nice texture strap. Kind of a nice strap too with the orange stitching in there. A very nice contrast. Uh, this, of course, a compression style dive watch uh, that we have in our hands here, but with bronze. This is actually my first experience 
uh, with a bronze watch as well. So a very, uh, well, this will be interesting as well for me. Now, this one's actually like the real McCoy. This is a real deal, not a, not like a prototype model or anything like that. So yeah, check out the very, very interesting, uh, dial on this one because of course that is the, the main feature, uh, with this Balticus bronze wave watch that we have here. So let's go ahead and wind this. Not, not a screw down crown, just a regular crown. Um, inside of this is a Miota 9015. Uh, one of my, one of my favorite movements. Actually, I am going to take the plastic off. We can't, uh, <laughs> we can't properly appreciate this dial, uh, without doing that, I don't think. All right, see, so yeah, take a look at this dial. Uh, that is a very, very unique dial, uh, with that green wave on the, uh, around the dial there for sure. Kind of obscures the markers a little bit too. You can't really, you have to kind of look inside to see them. Uh, if we flip it over, of course, you get the same wave pattern, uh, on the back along with all of the particulars about the watch as well. Uh, Sapphire crystal on this one. Uh, Miota 9015 is what's inside of here. Actually, it's in the process of the date change. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll this forward just so that we can, uh, we can mess with this a little bit as well. So yeah, Miyota 9015, uh, that means you get hacking as you saw there. That means you get a quick set date, uh, the date wheel being at the four o'clock position, as you guys can see. Uh, not a screw down crown on this one. Now on the back, it does say it has 200 meters of water resistance. Um, this is not a watch that I think I'd be diving with personally. Uh, it's a watch that I'd be wearing more because it looks cool. Uh, if we go ahead and turn the other crown on the watch here, we have the inner, we have an inner rotating bezel. Uh, on, of course, this is a compressor style dive watch. Uh, so you have that going there as well. See so a very, very, uh, unique looking watch for sure. I don't think that, uh, Balticus is going to be able to be accused of, of stealing on anyone else's design here. So very cool looking watch. So here is the Balticus bronze wave on my eight inch wrist. Uh, definitely a little bit of a bigger watch. I believe I saw in the specs 44 millimeters wide for this one. Um, so it might look a little big for smaller wrists, but obviously on my eight inch wrist, it's totally fine. See, it fits well. I really do like the rubber strap on this one. I don't, yet know if it really matches the watch all that well with the uh, with the racing holes uh, that it has on here, uh, which definitely let the watch breathe a little bit, but it, it might be a little bit of a mismatch, but I actually really dig the strap. Um, so let's go ahead and set the bronze wave aside for the time being, and let's check out the other Balticus watch uh, that is coming. So I will say with this one, you're getting the same um, probably overproduced production value on this. Uh, but as we crack this open, aha, this is the Balticus Stardust. So this one, very interesting look. Um, obviously, upon first glance, uh, it definitely gives off a very Royal Oak vibe as far as the watch is designed. Now, also interestingly, this watch is actually quartz movement. You can see the little, the little push tab here to stop the movement st uh, staying open. Uh, it's a Ronda 1015 uh, that is inside this. So a Swiss quartz movement uh, comes on this very, very chunky bracelet, obviously. This one uh, is much more my speed, and of course you can see why they call it the Stardust, because you have this uh, star-patterned uh, dial that just kind of really captures the light and really plays with it quite a bit. Plus, if we flip it over, I'm going to try it again here so you guys can see this. Now, one of my big no-nos is, of course, having an exhibition case back on a quartz watch, but if you're going to do it, uh, do it with a design on the back instead so you don't have to look at the quartz movement that's inside of it. That is the smart way to go. Now, I will say for sure the Stardust allows the dial itself to really be the star and really, not no pun intended, and really be the standout. Uh, the, the way the dial is designed is very unobtrusive um, with these just very basic markers and a very simple minute track running around the outside. I, I was not expecting... Uh, like, like I said, I, I'd seen the dial for the Stardust. I was not expecting, uh, the sort of Royal Oak like case and bracelet that this one does come on. Now you don't have to keep it on the bracelet. Uh, there is a leather strap that comes in the box as well, which is certainly appreciated. Uh, but yeah. Oh, wow. Look, that's a, oh my goodness. I did not even notice this the first time. Quick release on a bracelet. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, yeah, I don't, 
I could not recall ever seeing a quick release bolt on a bracelet. That's kind of wild. Um, so yeah, so I guess if you don't like the bracelet on your Stardust, uh, it's going to be super easy to swap out for the leather strap that's in there. That's pretty cool. Um, let me go ahead and pop this on the wrist. We'll take a look at how it looks. So here is the uh, Balticus Stardust on my 8-inch wrist. Uh, it is a little bit of a larger watch, but of course for me that's not a problem. Uh, and because you have the the lugs that just angle straight downwards, uh, it definitely hugs my wrist uh, in a very comfortable fashion for sure. So again, we'll, we'll get to spend a little bit of time with this one uh, and check it out. Uh, but a definitely uh, impressive first impression uh, on both accounts from Balticus. All right, and now uh, I guess time for the PhD de resistance uh, because the one I'm most excited about because this is my watch. This is uh, uh, my first purchase of 2019. Um, you guys can already see the brand through the paper uh, that John wrapped it with, but let's go ahead and tear into this guy real quick. So look, I told you guys when I did uh, the review on the Nazario Sauro that I was going to end up with an NTH sub at some point. Uh, that day is today. Uh, finally decided to pull the trigger on an NTH Nacken Renegade. So let's go ahead and pop this bad boy open. Uh, we'll toss the warranty card aside and slide out my new baby. And there she is. Uh, so this one, uh, I'll, I'll explain why I decided to go with the Renegade, um, just because I, I knew the Nacken line was the one that was my favorite. Uh, John recently said that he's getting a small shipment of the Nacken Modern Blue watches in. Uh, and so I was debating, like, do I want the Modern Blue? Do I want one of the Renegades that he has left? Because, I, like I said, I knew I was probably going to end up with a Nacken. I just didn't know which one. So I ultimately decided to go with the Renegade because I have a couple Blue Divers already. Uh, I'm going to probably be getting another Blue Dive Style watch as well. So I wanted to go with one that was going to be a little bit different, a little bit more standout in my collection. Um, and just the, the ombre style dial on this watch is just really interesting. Um, it's a tough watch to film and to photograph, I've heard from people so far. But look, if you turn it this way, um, you can definitely see like that dark blue in the middle, that really rich blue color. But of course, if you are looking with it with the light hitting it, um, you almost get a sort of brownish or bronze-like um, color, or actually not really bronze, but more of a brass-like color on the watch there. So like I said, it definitely plays a little bit, of course, uh, has the black gradient along the outside, and then the black steel bezel on the top here. Uh, I want to go ahead and get it wound up and started, so let's go ahead and wind her up. Now, being as I've already done a review on the Nazario Sauro, and being as the NTH subs, uh, from a spec standpoint, are pretty much the same. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing like a full-fledged... Wow, look at that blue. God, I love that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a full-fledged review on this watch. I think what I will do um, is wear this for a few weeks, uh, come back to you guys tell you, you know, things I'm really enjoying about it, about this, about the Knack and Renegade specifically, um, tell you guys things I'm really enjoying about it, things that I, I might not be enjoying about it so much, and doing, um, doing the review that way rather than, you know, my very detailed review where I go through and give you the specs of the watch and, and, and stuff like that. If you guys want to check out, like, the specs of the NTH subs, uh, go back and check out my Nazario Sauro review. Uh, I'll link it up here in a card, and I'll link it in the show notes down below. But, yes, yeah, so I decided to pull the trigger on a Renegade. I'm so, so excited uh, that I have an NTH sub. Let's, let's put this on the wrist. we got to check it out. And I don't know if John sized it for me on purpose or if this is just how it comes, uh, but perfect fit. Right out of the box. Uh, very, very cool. Chances are this one's probably not leaving the wrist for a little while, aside from checking out the Balticus and aside from checking out the uh, the Ocean Core uh, Diver as well from Ocean Crawler. But yeah, very. Uh, I, I'm just I'm super excited to have it. Like I said, I've wanted one for a while, uh, and I finally had the funds saved up to pick one up, and so uh, I decided to get it. So, so yeah, the Knack and Renegade uh, is on my wrist. Uh, like I said, I filmed that unboxing uh, a day ago as I'm recording this part of the video, uh, so I did get to spend the whole day with this. Um, it's it's awesome. I'm I'm really enjoying it so far. 
Uh, like I mentioned, it's gonna be something that is staying uh, on my wrist for, for the immediate future for sure, uh, which is uh, which means I'm gonna have to start Schwarzkopfing because I still have to wear uh, like the or like the core diver and I have to check out the Baltica stuff uh, so that I can review them, which would be really good. Uh, but yeah, this one is awesome. I'm really pleased uh, an NTH sub was on my list of watches to purchase in 2019. And it just so happens that I was able to to raise the funds a little bit quicker than I thought that I would. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger and uh, and yeah, <laughs> very, very pleased with it so far. So yeah, that, that was those five watch unboxings. Um, I hope you enjoy those. The, the plan is to review the Balticus watches first, uh, and then I'll probably get to the Ocean Crawler watches uh, a little bit after that as well. So look forward to those reviews. Again, next week, we're gonna be talking about uh, my 2019 watch resolution, so look forward to that video as well. Thank you guys very much uh, for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and click that like button down there below. Also, if you're new to the budding watch enthusiasts, welcome. Thank you for checking out the channel. It would mean a lot to me if you could hit the red subscribe button and then ring the bell icon next to it. That way you never miss when I post a new episode. Of course, I'm also on Instagram as well. Follow at budding watch enthusiasts uh, to follow me there where I'm sure you'll be seeing pics of all of these uh, fine watches that I just got in today. And uh, that's it. Uh, happy uh, 2019 guys. Thanks again for watching. I will see you the next time.